Hey everyone, Coach and Hoka One One Athletes Hage Candy here with another uh, Training Talk Tuesday. It is a Saturday. Sorry it took me so long to get this one out. Again, I really appreciate all your uh, questions and comments and votes up. We're going to tackle two of the top voted questions because they're kind of similar. And these are the ones I looked at on Wednesday or Tuesday that had the top votes. I know there was another one about weight training. Uh, with that one, I kind of answered it in some previous Training Talk Tuesday. So you can check out my playlist there uh, with periodization. But this uh, top voted question, we'll dive right in. So top voted question number one, and again, these two were kind of related. Uh, what are the pros and cons of hitting different energy systems in the same workout rather than in separate workouts on separate days? I currently do a VO2 max workout on Tuesdays and a lactate threshold workout on Thursdays, but I see a lot of pros doing workouts like the Michigan that hit both of these systems in one workout. Now the Michigan uh, one where you do some track hard track intervals, then you go do maybe a tempo run uh, and then go back to doing hard track intervals. So it's kind of mixing between what we call VO2 max or faster, more anaerobic component work over 5k race pace intensity to running dialing it back and maybe running five or ten minute tempo run effort that's maybe more like slower than 10k pace or half marathon uh, race pace now uh, we'll answer that question in the context of the second question uh, which was a similar thing of kind of mixing energy systems within the same workout so second question hill repeats question Hello, Mr. Candidate uh, and everyone else on this channel. Following on one of your training programs, I did a hill repeat workout 12 times one minute uh, hard uphill, we take it, <laughs> and then after that followed it by four times 15 second hill sprints uh, with the recovery in between warm up and cool down. After my workout, uh, anaerobic to aerobic ratio was 3.7 versus 1.6. I assume that's uh, respectively, which makes me think, what is the desired ratio I should be after? Did I push hard enough, uh, though I was pretty knackered afterwards? Question two in that is, in what way does this workout benefit me? Uh, I mean, how does it affect my cardiovascular and muscular system in uh, terms of helping me become a better ultra runner? I really appreciate your scientific uh, speaking out of experience explanation. Uh, I hope this other this question will help others to understand and eventually improve that segment of their training. Thank you uh, in advance and good luck with your recovery. So great question there. Uh, he also said, uh, "Keep well, everyone." Um, but uh, yeah, it's you want to think of the pace intensity spectrum, and we'll pull up our free download, higherrunning.com pace intensity spectrum, as a spectrum. Right? It's not set in stone things as much as jack daniels in his original distance running formula book said oh there's no man's land and you got to be in these different zones and if you're in between you're screwed because it's this gray area that's not necessarily true if you think about it right if you go out and you run hard and your heart's pumping and the blood's flowing and you're breathing hard uh you're probably getting quite a bit of cardiovascular benefit right you're training your heart and lungs to be more efficient and to work harder with increasing running intensity and speed now, if your form gets sloppy while you do that, if you're all over the place thrashing around, that might train some bad neuromuscular patterns though, or it could lead to injury is really the main risk, right? We talked on it. The heart and lungs could usually take a pretty good beating and, and be trained moderately hard. Uh, you see this in cyclists a lot, uh, going out for you know four or six hours, pro cyclists uh, almost every day pretty much, right? Going moderately hard, at high heart rates. But the, the impact force of running fast and hard and thrashing around is probably going to lead to a skeletal muscular injury, bones, tendons breaking or getting inflamed, things like that. So that's really the danger of going too hard on an easy day and crossing over into a spectrum when you're not supposed to. Now, when we get into the case of these two workout examples, be it the Michigan or the second example with the hill repeats, we're talking more about dealing with what we call the VO2 max intensity realm a very aerobic based but also could have some anaerobic component more on that later i wouldn't worry about the exact ratios especially if it's something like a a watch telling you that because it's not going to be able to accurately read that let's be real uh you know unless you're measuring your blood lactate values in a lab and you're you've got the the mask on and it's measuring your you know co2 and and oxygen flow it's not going to be very accurate exactly with anaerobic versus aerobic, but you know you're going anaerobic when you start going really hard and you're breathing really hard and you're about over 85, 
88% maximum heart rate, if you know what that is. Uh, so it's kind of the difference between going from that, that VO2 max zone we call, you know, if you see it on the pace intensity spectrum there, 5K pace, roughly, 5K pace intensity, maybe 3K pace intensity. Usually it's best to train that system with like one minute, two minute, three minute types of intervals, right? Now we go a little bit harder than that in an all out race or in a shorter distance, higher intensity hill sprint with a short rest and we could go anaerobic or going, you know, spiking the heart rate over 90% max heart rate for a long period of time or, you know, short bursts with a short rest and you have what we call an anaerobic energy contribution. Now, to mix those two things in the same workout can be beneficial. It can be beneficial. I, with our higher running training programs, we usually like to separate that a bit and most training programs will have a dedicated, you know, 20 minute tempo run on Tuesday. Then you do your, your track intervals on Thursday, right? Because the goal of the workout really matters in the context of what type of event you're training for. If you're training for the 1500 meter or the mile, you need some more anaerobic component and some more sprint speed. If you're training for an ultra marathon, you don't necessarily need what we call a lot of anaerobic and lactic acid, but the hill sprints train you at the neuromuscular level well. And I'll talk on that at the end of this talk, uh, more on that later. So that's why you're doing the hill sprints and you're doing them uphill because a lot of ultras have hills in them and you could really activate your glutes really well uh, sprinting uphill. Uh, speed training being something that ultra runners very rarely do. So it's kind of the icing on the cake, so to speak. But you know, you look at mixing in the, the realm between the VO2 max to uh, going harder than VO2 max, right? Uh, or tempo running a notch below VO2 max into VO2 max, it all kind of blends together. It all kind of blends together. And so it's hard to separate exactly. And you might not hit the intensity exactly, but that's okay is what I'm saying. And so these workouts that mix from one system, from tempo running into VO2 max running, uh, it can be okay. It can be okay. It could be very beneficial. But for simplicity, our training programs and most training pro programs will kind of dedicate and focus on one system at a time, one day at a time, and then uh, you know work from there because you don't need to have that many hard intensity days per week, right? Two or three is, is quite a bit the peak of training. Most of your days are easy aerobic based building miles uh, or recovery days or recovery miles, right? Um, so that's really the answer to that part of the question is, yes, it is okay to blend. And it's very common when people are doing maybe a hard tempo run uh, you know, they start at 80% max heart rate. Then after about 10, 15 minutes into the tempo run, maybe you're going a little too hard or you're going up a hill, the heart rate starts going into 90% max heart rate. So it's crossing over, getting closer to VO2 max. And that's okay as long as you're not pushing so hard that you're going to injure yourself with a muscle strain or muscle tear or your form's breaking down. Or if you go too hard too often, uh, you know, mentally it's very hard. And so that's the overtraining risk really. But in terms of crossing over, yes, you could get some VO2 max benefit. Yes, maybe you crossed your lactate threshold and that's okay. And it's all in the context of the same workout on the same day. Now with the hill workout and hill sprints, it's kind of the same sort of thing. We're triggering you to, to stimulate your fast twitch muscle fibers, to stimulate your glute muscles sprinting uphill. And those in that workout, those are with full recovery. So it's not supposed to be a lactic acid building, lactate building workout. Uh, it's supposed to be running at a high intensity, maybe an all out sprint to train your muscle fibers with good form. And it feels intense in the 15 seconds you're sprinting, but you're taking a full recovery in between, uh, be that one minute or two minute, you're catching your breath. It's not like going to the track and doing, you know, four times 200 meters all out sprints with only a one minute rest in between and you're really gonna be burning lactic acid. That's like an 800 meter type of workout, right? Or a half miler type of workout. So, you know, how your blood pH changes, how, how the acid, the lactic acid uh, concentration changes and the lactate flooding your blood uh, changes matters. And that matters uh, depending on what you're trying to stimulate in the workout, what system. But to end this talk, and the most important thing with these pace changes within the workout is not just looking at, oh, you know, is this VO2 max? Is this aerobic? Is this anaerobic? It's more looking at what speed and velocity am I running? Uh, and what, what is that relative to my goal race pace, right? If you want to run a uh, sub three hour marathon, 652 per mile pace, 
you need to be very comfortable with your lactate threshold pace being significantly faster than that, right? 640, 630 per mile pace. Likewise, if you're an ultra marathon runner and you're doing a bunch of slow shuffling all the time, you might be able to get through some long runs going LSD, long, slow distance, but to build some efficiency and to be able to tackle some hills uh, and move efficiently up hills, having some high intensity hill sprints in there gives the body a chance to kind of say, hey, you know, We'll, we'll use our glute muscles, our butt muscles more. We'll uh, try to run with a bit more efficiency uh, or running economy, right? It's the name of the game, running economy. Uh, we've become more efficient because at the neuromuscular level, stimulating the fast twitch muscle fibers with our brain body connection, doing high intensity sprints, we've ironed out our running form better. And hopefully that makes us more efficient at slower speeds as well. So all your race paces, be it ultra marathon, marathon, 10K, 5K, half marathon, uh, become more efficient, right? You're able to run at a lower relative heart rate at a certain pace. So the speed training and the sprints are more for that. They're more for stimulating the fast twitch muscle fibers, the ease of movement, developing strength and running power in your stride at the muscular level, neuromuscular level, rather than uh, just trying to be in the pain cave all the time and trying to build uh, buffering capacity to lactic acid and all those things. Sometimes you do want that if you're a mid-distance runner, uh, but if you're a long-distance runner, the speed training and the intensity training is either more for that or it's more for gains in VO2 max, whether you have to power up a hill in a race or you're sprinting to the finish line of a long-distance race. So that's really uh, the answer to that question. Again, I know this is kind of vague sometimes. These are pretty in-depth training talks, but sure to check out my playlist on here. I've been doing this for over a decade here on YouTube, training talks. Uh, try to get one out by next week as well. So submit your questions and top voted uh, comments below. Thank you so much for your dedicated support and for watching these. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, can't thank you guys enough. Thanks to the Patreon supporters for really making this channel possible. Again, stay tuned for more on here. Got some adventure vlogs, stuff like that on the way. Maybe some exciting announcements. Thanks to title sponsor Hoka One One. Keeping the dream alive. Hope you're doing well. And stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.